This cave we're going to go into now, though, has some rather extraordinary evidence of past human activity. All of the entrances to the cave come off the cliff wall and then they venture inside through this Lyrio limestone and dolomite interface. Some of the caves are absolutely huge, as the island of Mona has one of the largest coastal caves in the world, which runs for 21 kilometers. And this cave stretches for, yeah, maybe three or four kilometers. In the late 19th century, there was extensive guano mining on the island. So you can see some of the evidence of that, where people have been mining for guano. And it's destroyed a lot of the cave architecture. You can see here some of these stalactites have been probably dynamited out to create these entrances. But what's truly extraordinary inside these caves, well, inside about 25 of the caves that we've surveyed, we've found evidence, extensive evidence of pre-Columbian art and iconography. So in this cave chamber here, you can see covering all of the ceilings and walls is extensive pre-Columbian iconography. Some of this is incredibly complex in geometric patterns. There are many uses of faces some of the extent of it. We think that many of the pre reasons for coming in here for pre-Columbian peoples is to find sources of water. And here you can see pools of water inside the cave. And sources of water on the island are very hard to find. But these chambers interweave and run for a very long way. Here you can see more evidence of the pre-Columbian iconography. Stretches down there through into that chamber. More evidence of the extensive guano mining here. These trenches have been carved out. But as you come through, what's really extraordinary is you seem to start to find evidence of very early 16th century inscriptions on the wall. So here you can see three crosses of the Calvary with Jesus written underneath. You can walk through this into another chamber. And underneath here you see the name Miguel Ripoll from the year 1550 and stretching down the chamber all the way down there you see evidence of that pre-Columbian uh, activity. Here's another name, Alonso Perez Rodriguez, Juan El Mosso, year 1550, August. And this is really cool. We also start to find uh, inscriptions. And this one here says, Plura Facet Deus. Many of the things done by God. And we find a lot of these inscriptions and religious symbols, which seems to be some sort of dialogue between the 16th century Europeans arriving on the island and these chambers which are full of pre-Columbian rock art. Jesus Christ on that side of the stone. And then above here, you see Enix. It's something actually we haven't translated with pre Columbian rock art inside. It says Alonso Contreras. More oh, beautiful pre Columbian iconography, both on the walls and up here on the ceiling. Stretching round 
here. Oh, we have more iconography. is an anthropomorphic figure with his hands splayed, covered interesting there with the charcoal of the guano era. So that's likely to be the torches of the guano period. Here's a geometric pattern for pre-Columbian times with like a body stamp style with a cross next to it. There's more names, Canonicus. And here's another Latin inscription, which seems to say, Dios te perdone. So trying to get an idea of this religious dialogue, what's interesting is that the Europeans who are writing these inscriptions are not doing it in a sort of European space of like one of the new churches or settlements they're building. They must be coming right into the heart of a sort of pre-Columbian world uh, where these bits of iconography have been for you know, hundreds or thousands of years. And these caves were very much the spiritual spaces of the indigenous population in the Caribbean. And that dialogue you really start to see represented. So here you start to see some crosses on the wall, cross there, flanking a pre-Columbian figure with, the, uh, with two hand marks going through it. And this cross here faces a really beautiful pre-Columbian figure on this side of the little chamber. And it's really nice, this pre-Columbian figure wraps its way right round the bulge of the rock. And it's got that flow stone coming over the right hand side of the face, giving some idea of its age. Yeah. Not only do you get inscriptions, but you get some writing here. We've got something on a speleogen, it's just been a cross drawn on the speleogen, some writing underneath. Another name here Capitan. Alegria or Alegre. And then under here, we start to find one of my favorite inscriptions that we found, which says, Verbum caro factum est, by someone who appears to be called Bernardo, which means, and then the word was turned to flesh, from John. Chapter 1, verse 11, which really gives a sense of the dialogue going on in this very interesting time of European colonization. As, if I can find it, we start to see the remains of our last piece of pre-Columbian iconography, which is still preserved here incredibly well, and only because so few people come into this cave. So here you can see starts of these pre-Columbian faces and figures artwork on the wall stretching right down that tunnel and onto the next chamber.